Hi, it's Paul from Model Build International. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Link is down there. Um, that way you'll get notified of future videos. That's um, the giveaways we have now and again, the, um, the builds and also obviously the reviews. Today we're going to have a look at um, a book from Nuts and Bolts. Not one of the, not the latest one, but it's a pretty new one. This is volume 28. It's on the SD Kev Z3, which is the Moltier or the Mule. Soon after invading Russia, German troops discovered that their um, wheeled transport vehicles were completely unsuitable for the Russian roads, especially in spring and autumn when there was loads of mud. Only half tracks could move around pretty freely and there wasn't enough of those to spare to take them from combat roles to use as supply trucks. So they decided to use half track versions of standard trucks. Um, and they, uh, they performed admirably, and as you can see here, uh, they're quite at home moving through the mud. Okay, volume 28 in Nuts and Bolts, up to, they're up to volume 40 now. This one on, is on the Maltier SDKMZ3, which is basically a truck with tracks on the back. Uh, so I open it up, and there's some models that are uh, featured as part of this book. They're mentioned later on, uh, point those out. Published 2011, so the model stuff is all pretty much up to date. Obviously, the uh, uh, technical stuff and the information about the Maltiers is uh, is still correct and pretty in in depth. Uh, starts off with the introduction and development. Um, basically, these came about, or the need for these was when the Germans invaded Russia. They discovered that trucks with wheels just does not cut it in the mud um, in spring and autumn. So, hence, they needed these trucks with tracks on to actually uh, get things delivered, get things to the frontline units. Um, so that's where they came from. Started off with, there was uh, Opel and the SS developed two different um, track systems, as you can see here, if we go out onto the back of the, underneath the trucks. Um, essentially, sort of leading it, it sort of sounds as though the Opel one was actually a better idea. But the SS, I know, kind of pulled rank, and it was theirs that got uh, produced. Um, then it goes through the general technical construction. Um, basically, there was a few different types of two-ton truck that had their uh, uh, had tracks at the back, and also there was a Mercedes 4.5-ton truck. So it goes through, and then it goes through the technical destructions of construction of the Opel, of the Ford the Magyros, and then also the Mercedes 4.5 ton one, which used, had different tracks at the back. Essentially it had um, uh, Panzer II tracks at the back. So then table of technical information of all the different types. So essentially what you've got is you've got the Opel, the Ford, um, the Magyros, and the Mercedes one. And they've got slightly different, all SDKF Z3s, but they've got a letter or uh, a number after the end of them to differentiate them. And obviously they had um, uh, different bodies on the on the back, depending on their use. So here's uh, some information on it in active service. Basically there was a lot of these things built. Um, I'm talking here 14 to 15,000 built then out on the Mercedes ones. I think the book on the publisher's website it mentions 22,000 overall perhaps. So there was a lot of these things made and there it's, it's basically what it was made for, just uh, driving through mud. And here's the uh, table showing the uh, in 1944 when which units had how many vehicles. Uh, organization, camouflage and markings, a summary and then talking about the uh, the model builds, um, they built a was it a cyber hobby one, ICM one, a new connections, a Zvezda one, and just goes through the differences between them, which things worked, which things didn't, and there was um, uh, 
uh, Tony Greenland also did some scratch building on some of them as well to sort of make it a bit of a, a mix and match. Uh, there's a list of models, acknowledgements, uh, 25 primary references used. Now onto the main bit of the book for um, modelers is the black and white period photographs. Um, in fact, this starts off with the Opal winning gear that they uh, they developed. Um, so it goes through those. You can see here, basically the Opal winning gear was essentially they uh, left the back axle where it was and just instead of a road wheel they put tracks on there. Sort of a real easy sort of combination. Um, and then this is the the SS version, I seem to think, which was which was done differently. So we go through here the trial vehicles, and it goes through. Um, there's loads of photographs here of vehicles in all sorts of places with all sorts of things on the back. There's an interesting photograph. The trucks are stuck on the road, whereas the multi is taking a shortcut through the mud. Um, and this is basically what it's designed for getting to uh, combat vehicles and delivering fuel and ammunition, whereas the trucks just couldn't get to them. Um, so there's loads of these photographs used as a towing vehicle as well. Um, and there's all sorts of diorama ideas here. You can see how, uh, how they were whitewashed, where it all wore off, carrying fuel. Uh, first aid, 37mm uh, flat gun on it. You know, it's probably not um, about as big as a gun as you'd want on there. With a crane on the back. Thinking through this, um, all sorts of different camouflages you can see used. And on trains. Home done camouflage, um, forward in camp walk trees on trains. So, basically, all sorts of photographs here of the vehicles, all the different types, it goes through all of them. It also points out the different cabs that came in later on as um, metals became an important resources, resource. The, um, the cabs changed and were basically made from things like uh, wood, dragging an 88mm. Um, again, lots of, there's quite a few photographs of Maltiers dragging things way more than they should have been dragging. Um, there you go, this Maltier tow load was 6,000 kilograms, while the gun and the gun's trailer at the back there weighed more than 7,000 kilograms. There's lots of vehicles, a dummy wooden tank based on a Maltier. This is the Mercedes, which is a lot bigger. Here you can see this looks a lot like the, uh, the well, a lot like the Panzer II running gear because basically it is the Panzer II running gear. And then look at all these, there's loads of photographs on. Like I said, Loads of photographs of each type going through them all. Here are dragging a pack 43 around, and here's one dragging two pack 43s around. Um, the maximum trailer weight here was uh, 5,000, and even just one gun was weighed more than that. And it's still dragging them around and the crews. There's a nice photograph, uh, sort of pretty deep in mud and still making headway there. So we're then on to a whole bunch of um, 135th scale drawings um, and they go through a whole diff all sorts of different types of backs and on here this starts off with an open body and covered um, with box body, cranes, um, I think that's a 20 millimeter, yeah, two centimeter flat gun. And on to Fords and the late production. You can tell the late production by the mud guards. And that's an example of a late production um, cab. 
So we go through this, and onto the big Mercedes. So there's lots of diagrams here, so you can see how things look. Then onto the colour plates, um, which are all based on photographs you saw earlier, like the S33 that's written in there. That means it's off page 33, so you can see that black, original black and white photograph, and there's the, the colour plate based on it. There's some nice things there to help you. And then onto modern vehicles that um, are in museums or still driving around. Um, there's lots of photographs in here, so showing you the bits that you don't normally see under the hood inside the cab, close-ups of things. So you can see all the finer details here that you won't see anywhere else. So there's quite a lot there. I think there's over 300 photographs in total through the book, uh, 200 black and white, and I forget the exact number, but I think close to 100 colour photographs. Um, let me go through the builds. Um, this is a scratch-built ambulance to make it look like um, the colour plate that was earlier in the book. Um, I think this here is the tracks are from one kit and the chassis from another kit. And go through those. And that's them, so 160 pages. Um, what you also might have realised is there was also vehicles like this with the tracks at the back um, that were armoured and those were covered in uh, volume 30, I think it is. Um, so if you want to see the, um, the ones with the naval verfers on the back, that's um, basically the, the same vehicle but with armour on it and a naval verfer, and that's in, as I said, volume 30. So if you're doing the, the, uh, the multi-air trucks, this is it's the only book you're ever going to need. All, all the information is all in one place. Um, so that's about it. So it's a pretty neat book covering everything you might need to know. Um, uh, if you want a copy, I'll put a link underneath the video f uh, to the Nuts and Bolts website. That's where I get uh, I get my copies from. I bought, bought some from there. Um, but uh, thanks to many thanks to Nuts and Bolts for sending this particular issue along for us to have a look at.